And that's why you shouldn't let your pets watch 50 Shades of Grey. In more serious news, nanoparticles. Building crisis? We'll find out. They're small, useful, potentially harmful, relatively new, and used more than Wi-Fi on campus. We have an on-site interview with a structural engineer to figure out more uses of these nanoparticles. On to you, Brian. I'm Brian Fantana, coming to you live from a concrete manufacturing plant in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm joined today by structural engineer Dick LeBeau. So, Mr. LeBeau, can you tell me how are these nanoparticles being used in concrete? Well, we have three main types of nanoparticles that are being used here at our facility today. We have nano, uh, carbon nanotubes, which are put in there to increase the strength and the durability of the concrete. We have SiO2 particles, which are also in, put in there for the strength and durability. And then we also have a nanoparticle called TiO2 particles, and it's like a self-cleansing agent, and it also increases the rate and the level of hydration in the concrete. Interesting. So can you tell me how are these nanoparticles being added into the concrete mix? Well, it's really actually a simple process. What you do is you take the water, and for example, you add your carbon nanotubes to the water. It undergoes a process called acid etching, which allows the carbon nanotubes to evenly disperse throughout the water. And then basically you just make your concrete um, with that water and the nanomaterials get evenly dispersed throughout it. I see. So can you tell me then, how can such small particles make such a big difference in a big structure? Well you would think since they're so small and you can't even see them that they're not you know, helping at all. But actually they're allowing themselves to get into these tiny minuscule cracks to prevent larger cracks from forming over time. I see. And finally, do you know of any health effects or environmental issues that you should be aware of? Well, to my knowledge, we're following all of our regulations and codes that were given to us. So on our end of it, we're doing everything possible to make sure everything stays safe and sound. Okay, back to you guys in the studio. Wow, nanoparticles full and cracks? I'll tell my plumber next time he's bent over working on my sink. Up next, we have an event interview with environmental specialists at a research facility for nanoparticles. On to you, Brian. I'm Brian Fantana, coming to you live from a nanoparticle research facility in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm joined today by Dr. Heisenberg, who's going to tell us more about these nanoparticles. So, Dr. Heisenberg. What should we be aware of in terms of negative implications in the environment? Uh, there are some negative health risks. Starting off from the production process, these synthetic nanoparticles, when they're produced, it's a highly energy intensive process which results in a lot of emissions. Also, when you're undergoing construction with nano reinforced concrete, you can have runoff from the construction site, which will um, cause these nanoparticles to get into our sewer systems. And because they're so small, they're hard to filter out. And lastly, during demolition, when you hit, say, a building that's nano-reinforced with a wrecking ball, these nanoparticles can end up airborne and we can end up inhaling them. So obviously there's going to be some human side effects with these nanoparticles then too. Uh, yeah, I believe there are going to be human health effects due to these nanoparticles exposure. Um, a lot more research needs to be done, however, there have been a few studies, specifically on TiO2, and if you inhale TiO2 and it gets in your lung cells, it can cause apoptosis, which is cell death within your lung cells. Okay. So recently we were talking to a structural engineer who was telling us that they follow all of the regulations. All right, hold on, because there really is no regulations with nanoparticles. It's such a new technology that the regulations haven't really been put in place yet. So is there anything you would recommend in terms of regulations? Um, in terms of what I've been studying, I believe that regulations really need to be put in place in all aspects of the process. For instance, during manufacturing, we need to keep the workers that are handling these materials, keep them safe with proper ventilation systems and proper wearing for proper protective wear. And then, for instance, uh, during construction, you could make it a requirement that nano-reinforced concrete is pre-casted off-site to reduce exposure. And lastly, during demolition, more research needs to be done in order to uh, safely dispose of these nanoparticles. For instance, it's possible that you could maybe keep them separate from the rest of the demolition process, such as you would with asbestos cement. Okay, thanks for talking with us, with us today. Back to you guys in the studio. I hope you've been informed about the positive uses of nanoparticles in concrete, along with the negative environmental factors. Unfortunately, we're out of time for the night. I'm Chris Garnett. Stay classy, Columbia.